On September 20th, 1995, a dramatic and bizarre incident occurred over the open ocean. That day, two U.S. Navy carriers, the USS Abraham Lincoln and the USS John Paul Jones, were on their way back to San Diego, California, after supporting American troops during Operation Southern Watch in Iraq. While conducting a typical training mission in their F-14 Tomcat fighter jet, pilot Neil Whalen Jennings and radar interceptor officer Lieutenant Buga hoped to liven things up for the crews on deck. Nearing the end of the flight, Jennings brought the aircraft near the John Paul Jones and performed a flyby at supersonic speed. Suddenly, while wrapped in a shockwave, one of the F-14's engines exploded. Caught on camera by a sailor from the USS Jones, the blast from the Tomcat astonished everyone. There was no way the pilots could have survived the airplane disintegrating at that speed. But miraculously, they did, even after performing a supersonic ejection, breaking the sound barrier, and ending up 55 miles away. Both men only suffered minor injuries. They were lucky to be alive to tell the story. The F-14 Tomcat the aircraft that pilots Neil Whalen Jennings and radar interceptor officer Lieutenant Buga used that tragic day was a Grumman F-14 Tomcat. The airplane became a pop culture icon thanks to its appearance in the movie Top Gun, first released in 1986. The F-14 was a supersonic, twin-engine, two-seat, variable-sweep-wing fighter. It was the first of the American combat fighters designed to fight against Soviet MiG fighters during the Vietnam War. The Tomcat flew for the first time in December 1970, eventually replacing the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom. It was an effective fighter that evolved for the better, but its first iterations had engines that were not powerful enough for its size, which led to specific use restrictions. The engines of the F-14As were prone to compressor stalls when performing high angle of attack maneuvers, especially at low altitudes. In the late 90s, the Navy and USAF were transitioning to the F-14B, which had 30% more powerful engines than its previous version. Supersonic Speed Ejection When both pilots made it into the air in their Tomcat, their mission was to fly in a cruise missile profile, simulating an attack against the USS John Paul Jones. Everything was going well during the flight, until the USS John Paul Jones controller asked the two men crew to do their flyby as fast and as low as possible. Jennings continued to accelerate and descend. Then, at around 10 miles from the USS John Paul Jones, the Tomcat leveled off 500 feet at almost 600 knots, just like the cruiser had instructed. After passing the carrier, Jennings initiated a right-hand climbing turn to carry the Tomcat to holding altitude. He pulled the stick and set it to 6 Gs for the climb. Then he heard a bang, and the F-14 rolled uncontrollably to the left. Despite Jennings' attempts to regain control, it was futile. They kept rolling to the left. In an interview with the Combat Aircraft Journal, Waylon Jennings said, quote, My head banged hard off the right side of the canopy, and all of a sudden time stood still. In a span that was perhaps a few hundreds of a second, the comfortable air-conditioned cockpit of our Navy fighter became foreign and hostile. The next thing both pilots remember was the canopy coming off and Lieutenant Buga pulling the ejection handle. As the pilot escaped the cockpit, Jennings felt fearful of the wind blast, face trauma injury, and limb damage. His fear was justified, for supersonic ejections, especially at low altitudes, are deadly. Ejecting at a brute force of almost Mach 1 causes an instant death guarantee for a person. Limbs can be dislocated or shattered quickly alongside other physical problems. Bearing only slight burns from the accident, both men landed on the ocean and were rescued immediately. When attended by medical personnel, Jennings cut his burned mustache and, with a grin on his face, looked in a mirror and noted that he had also lost most of his eyelashes and eyebrows. After interminable interrogations, Jennings was shown the recording of his crash. He was astonished at how quickly everything happened and how he and Buga could have survived it. He recalled in the interview with CIJ, quote, The videotape showed our fighter cruising along at the speed of sound, with a vapor cloud intermittently covering the back half of our aircraft. Just after we passed the JPJ, our jet did a space shuttle Challenger imitation and exploded into a giant fireball. On the TV screen, the fireball was about 20 times the size of the aircraft. The board, created to investigate the accident, blamed a faulty component in the engine oil system, but with the remains of the aircraft buried in 17,000 feet of water, Nobody will ever know what actually happened. Jennings' conclusion to his accident is quite honest and sentimental. He told the CIJ, quote, Personally, I am at a loss to explain the event, but I am thankful that we made it back. I can't explain how he survived tumbling out of control at 600 knots in a fighter that broke apart, except to say that God was looking out for us that day. <laughs> 